Hey there guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing an O2 sensor on the 2016 GMC Sierra. This truck has just shy of 108,000 miles on it. We believe that the O2 sensor went out on it at the same time that the transmission went out on it, which is a whole nother story. When we were sitting four hours from home in an intersection of live traffic when the transmission went out, the, the engine revved up pretty high, six, 7,000 RPMs, wouldn't grab a gear, and then boom, check engine light came on. We assumed it was a uh, transmission issue check engine light because that would make sense. So got the transmission fixed down in Indianapolis, brought it all the way home with the check engine light on, scanned it, and the O2 sensor is bad. Bank one, sensor one. So we're gonna go ahead and replace that today. Anything else you got? <clears throat> And the funny thing is, when the transmission went out on the vehicle, we were actually going down to Kentucky to pick up our next project, which we'll give you a quick preview of that in this video. Uh, there's a couple things wrong with it. We'll let you know when we do the walk around of it. Uh, just to let you know, it does not have four wheels. That's right. So stay tuned to the end of this video and we'll check that out. This is the contraption we're going to use to get the O2 sensor out. We've got an O2 sensor socket. It's got this cutout in it so that the wire for the O2 sensor can be hanging hanging out right in this region here while the end of the socket is on the O2 sensor hopefully coming out super easily so let's go ahead and jump out of the vehicle and see what happens alright guys there's the oxygen sensor that we have to remove that is our bank one right there right here on this other side is our bank two so we're going to be grabbing this one up here we're going to try to get the socket on it you can tell it's just in a tight spot so it's going to be a little bit that's why it's got that cutout on it so we can go over the wire grab the sensor and then unplug it and it should should come out fairly easy but with these they heat up and they expand and they they get they get tight in that little space so we're going to do our best to try to get this off quickly and hopefully show you guys the process yeah we are on the driver's side of the truck too yep there's the passenger side here's Blake right underneath it and then we just got this little spot right here he's going to try to reach up there and grab it and we'll try to give you guys the best angle we can it's in a tight spot. Uh oh, got something, got the butter. Okay. <laughs> Get the butter. Get the butter. Did you get a little stuck in there? Okay. Is it on there good? Yep, socket's on there. What are the chances that I can get the ratchet on there, though? <laughs> Slim to none. Why are my hands so bad? <laughs> Your hand gets bigger when you're grasping something. Yeah, this isn't in a great spot. But, oh. you, but you do what you gotta do. No shit. The drive shaft is kind of in the way. <laughs> Change of plans. We're just gonna drive with the check engine light on. <laughs> and this socket right here forever. <laughs> Close call, close call, guys, close call. I don't know how the hell I'm gonna move this wrench once it is lined up, but don't worry about that when we get there. All right, guys, instant replay because we suck at this whole camera thing. Um, we got the wrench up there. We got the handle from the jack. Put it on there. Yank. I heard a pop, so maybe it's loose now. Yeah, it is. There we go, guys. Just like that, it was. Not as hard as we were expecting, it's just the matter of getting your hand up in there. Okay, now, we can't keep twisting on this because then the wire will just wrap around itself. And so now we have to figure out how to get this bad boy off of there. Oh, that dust is really hot right there. Might have to try to see if we can uh, disconnect the wire on it. Well, that's right there. Grab it and disconnect it. I think I can get up there. No. Um. Yeah, I see where you're talking. <coughs> I need to just get this off of there, I think. But now that the sensor's backed out a little bit, the wrench is jammed up against the frame. So you can see right there, that's where the connector is. That's what we got to disconnect. And then right there is where the oxygen sensor is. 
So give me light back to the sensor here. Some tight little spaces we're working here. What? <laughs> that sensor wasn't even hooked up. <laughs> Are you sure? What if the garage unplugged it and didn't plug it back up to remove the tranny? What did you do, just pull on the wire and it came down? Yeah, I just I put, grabbed it right here to just try to get some to me. All right, plug it back up. <laughs> <laughs> what the? Might as well replace it now. We've already got the new one. I can get my 50 bucks back. Okay, grab it from my angle. Get to try yours. So just the way my hand's turning. Betsy. Oh, I can't wait to try to thread the new one in here. <laughs> I could probably get it if I was laying on you or it's just my hands are going in the opposite direction in there. Oh yeah. Twist this wire so that it wants to twist with you. Man. Oh. They thread in there pretty deep. Yeah, yeah, they sure do. the third degree burn. Third degree burn. She sounds like she's out. Oh, like she sounds like she's out. There we go guys. We got it out to a little, little squeezing, a little prodding. She's still good looking. She got hot. That's let's, dark. Let's go ahead and throw her, throw her in. Well, There's a lot of exhaust gases that run through there. Yeah. Um, should we bring the new one down with us? Probably not. <laughs> Hopefully you guys can see that new sensor going in now. We did get the old one out. Just takes time to thread it out where your hand can barely fit. We're unsure if the old sensor was actually unplugged or not. That's finger tight. As I can get it, uh, we, we didn't actually disconnect it from the wire harness, but while we're here, we're going to go ahead and put the new one in. The old one did look pretty black. We'll... We got the connection on, plugged into the wire harness, and now we're it, the sensor was in there hand tight, so now Zach's just giving it final torque to three Ugga Duggas. Our favorite type of Ugga Dugga. Three's a lot of Ugga Duggas. Really? If you didn't know. Oh, such a fine movement. Of... Just a lot of slop in that ratchet. There's one Ugga Dugga. Two Ugga Duggas. One more ugga dugga. There we go. Three ugga duggas. All right, guys, we're out from underneath the truck. I'm in it. Scared to turn the key, but let's try it. See if the check engine light comes on. Go out. Go out. Go out. Okay, we're going to take this to extreme measures, clear the code, BRB, clear the code, start it, see what happens. Whoa, it's gone already. Cool, we'll let it run for a while and see if we get anything back.
Um, but I would say we're probably good here. We'll go ahead and link the device that we used down in the description to clear that code. And we'll see you in a minute. Alright guys, here is our next project. This is what we went down to Kentucky to get. It's a 1988 Yamaha Virago XV750. And the problems we're having on it, we're going to do a complete carb rebuild on it. And it needs coal packs. I've got some coal packs ordered and some spark plugs. It actually has the wrong spark plugs in it. So it won't run right. And the coal packs, one of the coal packs isn't uh, correctly firing. So we're replacing both spark plugs both coal packs and both uh, spark plug wire boots <clears throat> and then the spark uh, plug holder it has been a little bit neglected I wouldn't say 100% neglected it's had uh, its fair share of time sitting it has sat for at least seven years it had a rebuild on the carb four years ago but we're going to rebuild it again uh, it needs a tank reseal to get some of the rust out of the tank the tank is roughed, and you can see here it does have power. And it, it starts, but it won't stay running just because of the carb. It does have quite a bit of miles on it for a motorcycle. It's got 34,782. That's quite a lot of miles for this motorcycle, but we're going to do our best to get it back out on the road. It is an older motorcycle. It does need its fair share of TLC. You can see it's got good wheels on it, good tires. Uh, you can see where they've repainted it. They've primed it black. You can see the frame, the gas tank is primed black. And it needs a little TLC up here on the dash. The oh, chrome is starting to corrode. The lights are not correctly working. You can see it's kind of got a short here in the dial, the start button. Uh, we'll have to rework that, which is causing the lights not correctly work. And uh, the person that owned it removed the turn signals, front and rear, and they removed the mirrors. And they've added this chopper mirror, which we are going to remove, just because I don't like that, that design. <clears throat> and I do have new handlebar grips to replace these old wore out ones. And I want to get a new seat for it, just for the fact that this seat is wore out and that's actually damage from us where we strapped it and there's also damage here on the kickstand you can see where it's bent so just little minor things here and there but it is drive shaft driven you can see here it's where the drive shaft runs so we're going to work on the motorcycle uh, hopefully we'll have it ready by summertime uh, we are coming up on winter quite quickly then we've also got the Durango out here, which we're going to start on here soon. Then we got the Durango out here, which we are going to start here soon. Uh, I've done a lot to it, actually. Rims, front, light bar, headlights, stuff like that. It did have two new fog lights. Uh, I broke one out on a tree in the woods. <laughs> and we have to replace the front drive shaft on it because I did break the front drive shaft. The fuel pump is failing, so we're going to have to replace the fuel pump. And the starter is actually failing also. It's like, it's like getting a double whammy at the same time, not getting fuel, and it's not wanting to turn over the engine with the starter. And you can see replacement of the taillights, darkened taillights, the blacked out taillights. I do have a lot of rust coming here on the lift gate. You can see here. So I do want to find a different lift gate for it. And then also, we still have the old Sable here, which we are working on. We're going to get back into it actually this week. So that should be our Thursday video is the Sable. We're going to dive into this steering, which is still our problem. It's wanting to pull hard to the left. So we're going to dive into that, take a quick look at it, and see what we can find. Try to finish it up. It is a great series, and I'm really excited to try to find us another car. Thank you guys so much for watching the video today. We got the O2 sensor replaced on the 2016 GMC Sierra. Bank one, sensor one. It is the um, upstream sensor. We got that replaced. Still kind of weird how we got under there and pulled on the wire a little bit and it wasn't tight into the harness. This truck just got a fresh transmission rebuild. But the check engine light came on before the rebuild and then it was still on after the rebuild, but I didn't have an opportunity to scan it before the rebuild. So I don't know if that's what the code was for, if it was for the transmission. I don't know. 
but I had the new sensor. We had the old one cracked loose, so we went ahead and put the new one in. I'll, I will link that sensor in the description down below and the socket, the O2 sensor socket that we used. Uh, that's definitely a must have. You could go without it to take a sensor out because you can cut the wire and put the socket over it, but you, you wouldn't be able to put the new sensor back on because there's going to be a wire there unless you used an open face wrench or something and that, that would, would not difficult. have been easy to do. Let's say it, it simplified the process ten times. Yeah, because there's not a straight shot to it. So that made it much easier. We got a lot of things going on around here. But so you, uh, what did you talk about? I showed you the project, uh, what we went down to Kentucky and picked up the 1988 uh, Yamaha XV750. And also I talked about the Durango with the broken drive shaft and how the fuel pump is failing and the starter at the same time. Maybe. So, <laughs> man, man. We gotta dive into that. And it needs some heat. And, oh yeah, and the heat doesn't work. So yeah, it's definitely a project vehicle. If y'all came from my other channel, Blue Steel 323, uh, there's definitely more videos there from where you can see where it started and you can check out this vehicle and see where it's at now It's a night and day difference in the vehicle and then also we're going to dive further into the Sable this week So if you're following along with that Sable project, we're definitely going to hit that and hopefully have it in by Thursday So we're pretty excited about everything going on So make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell. You, you gotta know the videos are coming If you don't hit the bell, how you gonna know? That's exactly right. All right. Well, very good. Thank you very much for watching like, comment, subscribe, share, all those great things. We really appreciate it. It helps the channel a lot. Until next time, have a great day. Have a good one.